Hi everybody, this is Diane. I am going to do a, oh, a video showing some ephemera that I made with my beautiful, beautiful stamps from my friend Lorna Taylor from Taylor Made Journals. Um, she is a very talented lady. She um, designs beautiful digitals and you have seen me use quite a few of her digitals in my projects. And um, she makes beautiful journals and now she makes rubber stamps. So she uses her vintage images somehow and she has this machine that etches them into the rubber and then she has to uh, cut them and assemble them somehow. I don't know how she does it, but she does it. And um, I think she's listing a new one every month and then when that supply is gone she retires it and does another one because she doesn't have time to do to keep up inventory on all of them so I've been fortunate to get three um, and I think I'm not sure but I think she's getting ready to put up her sixth one which is beautiful but I'm not gonna get it it's it's bees it's got bees on it and it's a very beautiful vintage bee image but I'm not really into any sort of insects so I just you know when she put puts up something that I like I go ahead and get it so these are the stamps that I have this was one listing and it's stamps like that vintage market I stamped them on assorted colors of parchment paper this one is a French advertisement that looks like this and then these four came in one set and this is what they are oh I don't have that one so it's a definition for vintage and then the word journal in two sizes and it's got a nice vintage typewriter font and then um, definition for journal also so all four of those came in one set which just thrilled me so I thought it was about time that I actually uh, made some projects using these so that's what I did and we're going to work on some together here today we're going to recreate these I have a tuck spot so I would glue this to a page here and here and then tuck something in there and that's made with the vintage market stamp and then this one is on a glassine bag and these are made on library pockets. These are quite simple. And then this one is a tag. So they're all pretty simple, nothing too hard here. Let's just go ahead and this is the first thing I grabbed so we're gonna work on this vintage bag here. First thing I'm gonna do is ink the bag. This is just a little glassine bag and it measures four by six at this part without the flappy part. piece of vintage lace that I'm just going to glue onto that.
just dab some glue on the thicker portions of the lace, make sure the edges all get some glue. Now this one was stamped on gray vellum. This was this one was on a cream. But I'm going to ink the edges of this with vintage photo distress ink. It's actually distress oxide. And I want some music paper to back it. can't have much because there isn't a lot of room. There's some room above and underneath, but not much on the sides. So I'm going to take off the title. very old piece of music so it tears very easily. Okay, that fits on there. I'm going to leave that uneven piece there. So we can glue these pieces down. I'll flip this over. It's got some something sticky it keeps sticking to. Just think about what stamps you might have that you could do this with, or even just some digital images, um, what you could layer them to and what, and what you could layer them with, laces or music or you know vintage book pages and things like that. I'm going to add a butterfly stamp and this number. Now this came off of a vintage package and I just inked around it and glued it down. This is from a set of digital numbers. I don't remember who I got it from. I have this little dish with all these, these numbers that came off of the packages of decoupage papers. Um, I've got a whole bunch of them and then these digitals that I just cut up and put in this dish and keep them handy on my table here. Sometimes I forget about them. And just add those for little accents. And now all I have to do is, when I'm ready to put it in a journal, um, add a tag or a card or something inside. And now I have two of these ready to go. I don't, I'm not making these for any particular journal right now. I'm just gonna, I wanted to use these stamps, so I am just making some ephemera 
to put in my stash. Okay, next project. What do I have next? Oh, I guess it's going to be this one. So this one has the vintage market and they were stamped on, oh, I didn't sew around it, darn it. Well, I will just glue this one down. I taped it on and was going to sew it before I did this video, but I did that last night and then I forgot. So I did sew around that one and I do like the look of the stitching, but this one just won't have it. I could do faux stitching, just draw it on. So anyway, I I stamped it onto parchment paper, which wasn't heavy enough to be a tuck spot. So then I adhered it to just some plain cardstock. And I have some scrapbook papers that I am going to use to make these banners. I did have two, but now I only have one. I've got some more right over here. I'll just pick another one. This one is a light color, so I'll choose one that's a little darker. I cut this one down narrower. It's not as tall, so I'm going to make my banner skinnier. I thought this was pretty big. It would have to go in a big journal, so I'm going to try to make this one a little bit smaller. I'm going to cut this one inch, and that's a sturdy piece, so this one is sturdy, oh no, this one is sturdy and this one is paper. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it's not going to be too flimsy as you're tucking things in behind it. So one of them is sturdy, this one is just paper, but it's not a super thin paper, so it's fine. And I'm going to cut this at three quarters of an inch. I like to vary the width and the length of banners if I'm stacking them like this. And I'll figure out the length of them in just a moment. So I'm just going to fold it without creasing it too much and cut a V in it. It's harder to do with the cardstock piece. together so I know how I want them layered. And then I can cut a little bit beyond the mark so I have something to glue down. But before I glue anything to this, I am going to ink it. these before I glued them together, at least the light colored one. That's fine. And I have this doily that I cut out of cardstock with a die that I have, and I cut it in half so I could use it twice, use one doily twice. And I'll just 
put that behind it. And then this bird is a beautiful little die cut bird that I got in a Happy Mail, but I only have one. So I found this lady, thought I could use her. Um, she's in one of my digitals, hats and accessories. And she came from a from an antique catalog, which I was so very fortunate to get. And maybe she purchased that hat at the vintage market. Um, piece of fiber. I think I want this green piece, so I'll have to cut the purple off. Maybe add some of the blue in there. Well, I guess I better glue all these other things on first. Okay, now I will add my fibers. I'm going to put some glue down here. took me a lot longer yesterday because I had to assemble pieces and figure out what I was doing and get these things cut. But since I'm just copying that one, it's going much faster. Now I have a bulb pin and I have attached this little flat dangly thing. Somebody sent me these things in a Happy Mail and they were attached to, they were put onto a little tiny safety pin but I just took them off of the safety pin and put them on a bulb pin so I could do this little project. And I'm just going to tie um, a bow, a string, around it and then just glue it down. It's not actually pinned to anything. It'll just, the bow will be glued. If my gluey fingers can tie a bow, I will do it. Just glue that bow right there. It's still a large tuck spot. I didn't make it. In fact, it's even longer because I made the thing stick out more. I should let that bow thing dry there before I start picking it up and handling it. So it's a little bit shorter, but it's not any less wide. 
So they will have to go into journals that will accommodate the size of these tuck spots. But they are pretty, aren't they? And I love those stamps, the vintage Marcia stamp. Okay. Now this, I realize I didn't finish prepping for this either because I don't have another piece of cardboard. Couldn't figure out what I did with all my corrugated cardboard. I wonder if I just got rid of it because I, it just gets in my way and I don't use it and I may have just tossed it thinking cardboard's easy to get. <laughs> so I do have this little piece so I think I'll just use that. And this was actually used to stamp lines because that's why it's got ink all over it. But that's fine. I, I would have wanted ink on it anyway. So this is a vintage tag. It's got some marks on it. I'm going to ink it. This tag is just over three by six and a quarter-ish. And the journal stamp, just the large definition, just fits on there. I think the vintage one, I think that would fit also. Yeah, it does. I think. I'll, I'll do the back later, thinking. So I'm just gonna glue this to it. It's already inked. I'll just ink the edge where, where I tore yesterday. And I cut this, like yesterday I cut this to fit, like the right length. And then I tore off more of the backing of the cardboard and it released it and stretched it out a little more and I had to cut it some more. This is a little wide, but I will trim it after the glue dries. So this came off of that piece. All right, now I'm going to stamp my journal stamp. And I used my archival ink, Distress Archival Ink Ground Espresso. just going to wipe this edge. Oops, I wiped off the J, top of the J. This one has the line on it and I don't even mind it, but I'm just seeing if I can avoid it this time. better. It's very faint, but it's there. And like I said, I don't mind it. Um, now I'm going to stamp. I just have these number stamps. See, that one has a line on it too. And a border stamp. I didn't bother getting out my long skinny um, block because I don't need to stamp the whole piece. Let's see if I can cut these now. cardboard. It's thick in there. It's hard to get it in there. But not too hard. I can do it. And I didn't add 
a reinforcement on this side, but I did take um, a metal wire, a wire that came out of a shipping tag. In fact, I have one of those. Here it is. These white shipping tags. Well, this came out of a vintage one. So that's a vintage wire. This is bright and shiny. What I do with those wires? I saved a bunch of them. Oh, if they're in here. Yeah, there's some in here. They're all tangled up. This one's shinier than that one, too. Just put it through there and start twisting it. My fingers aren't working. There we go. And I took one of the ends of it and brought it down and wrapped it around just to kind of hold those two ends together and then snipped it. Try to snip it as close as you can so it's not too sharp. There. So we have I have two tags like that now. Um, and lastly, I have the um, library cards pockets. So I'm going to do this quickly because my battery light's flashing, and this is going to be quick and easy. Um, ink it. These are purchased library packets. I do have vintage ones, um, but I used these. I'm being very heavy handed with this right now. I don't usually spread it on like this, but a lot of it's going to be covered anyway. Um, so I used to have these in my shop, and this is just what I have in my stash. I don't have them in my shop anymore, but you can purchase them from other Amazon shops, or Amazon shops, uh, Etsy shops. Um, so this is mulberry paper here, and I did two green ones on these, so I figured I would use the pink for this one. And I know that you can wet the mulberry paper to make it tear where you want it to. But I'm not taking the time to do that right now. So I'm just going to glue that on there. I didn't cut out some definitions. So I'll just take this journal definition and cut it pretty close so it will fit. I do like that these definitions are nice and big. A lot of times if you get definition stamps, they're very small. But that fits on there nicely.
And on the journal one, I took um, the word journal and stamped it at the top. And on the one that has the vintage definition, I just stamped a border up there. And for this, I used my Ar Distressed Archival Ink Vintage Photo. It doesn't give you a crisp stamped image. But I don't mind. If you just used, I think the regular archival ink would give you a more precise image. So that looks good. So that's done, and I just want to add something to the card. I will ink around the card, and I have these little digitals. These are in my shop, my uh, vintage ephemera digitals, and um, I already had these fussy cut out, so I'm just going to take one and add it to, I guess it goes that way, <clears throat> add it to the card. I'll do the back later. Just want to make sure the edges aren't white where it got cut from the white paper. looks pretty sitting in the pocket like that. And I will <clears throat> go ahead and make another one that has the vintage definition um, after I turn the camera off, but <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed um, seeing these little projects and uh, I will link Lorna's Etsy shop and YouTube channel in the description below so you can keep an eye out for her um, stamps next time she has some stamps available. Um, yeah, and she has other things in her shop too. Check out her digitals. Her digitals are just gorgeous. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. And I hope that you will get out some of your supplies and make some projects today. Have a creative day today. Bye-bye.